Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Shine the Light. We have the beautiful, lovely, and talented Mr. Matt McGowan. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. I'm, I've been excited that uh, we've connected. I like your thoughts and your passion about life. Um, this man has a, a history, a vision, and a purpose, and um, he's uh, made a little home for himself in Quincy at Quincy College, and if I remember right, which I'm I'm probably wrong because my, my my brain abilities are are weak, but you 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 were born in Quincy, correct? Yeah, I, Quincy best Quincy's best kept secret, Adam Shore. Nice. Well, Thanks. let's uh, let's hear a little bit about um, your journey and what has sure. brought you to where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I could. I could go all the way back. I mean, I, I grew up in Adam Shore, um, you know, Marymount, Broad Meadows, wound up going to BC High. Um, and it's interesting. I think that's that's sort of where I, you know, indirectly how I sort of got into uh, my career. Um, I would take the red line to, uh, to BC High, to JFK. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's just miserable. There's just, you know, like the f February, gray you know packed subway car and uh, i'd be looking out the window and you know I, I would see all this graffiti outside and it was like the bright spot of of the day of the commute and uh i was like wow that's that's awesome that's amazing and i started you know looking into like color theory and you know why certain things you know work together and you know i had absolutely no skill set whatsoever um I, I could draw but not really that great uh, but I was just really interested in it. Um, the other thing was I, I would look at ads and, you know, there's just a bunch of terrible ads on the T. Um, but there were a couple back then that were, you know, kind of funny and they made you think. And I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. Um, but then I just I, I sort of ignored all of that. And, you know, I, I thought that success was you either become a cop, a fireman, you get in the trades or you work in town, you know, at some business uh, and, you know, it's, it's an office job and, uh, you know, there's, there, there wasn't an opportunity for, you know, any art or creative endeavor whatsoever. Cause I just didn't think it existed. Uh, I didn't think it, you know, I thought that was only in New York and LA uh, that it didn't exist in Boston. Yeah. Um, so, so it's funny. I, I had, I had sort of proclivities toward the arts, but I, I never pursued it because I just didn't think there was an option. Um, so after BC High, I went to Assumption College um, and it, it was funny, the uh, the accounting professor, because I was obviously an accounting major, uh, terrible at math, <laughs> uh, but yet I, I thought that that was, that was my career path. And my accounting professor was like, Hey, look, son, like you, you just, you, you don't got it, man. Like, this is not for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and he sort of, um, you know, shifted me towards, you know, English and, you know, marketing and communications. And, you know, I was like, oh, this is, this is actually more, more up my alley. And, you know, I, I'm interested in it. Um, and it, it's funny that I, I just, I, I, I tried to force what I thought was expected of me versus, you know, uh, going with my strengths and and knowing that those were an option and it was a viable option. That's it. that's interesting. So, because we went right into some of the past stuff um, mm -hmm. for the people listening, what is your role now? Um, returning back to Quincy and yeah. uh, you know trying to you know make your way over there. What is your sure. role at Quincy College? So I'm the, I'm the director of marketing. Um, prior to, uh, this, I, I've, I've worked in the Boston adver advertising scene for, you know, about 20 years. Um, you know, I got in sort of as, as a, as entry level and basic as you can get. I, I was, uh, a grunt and I loved it. I, I worked my way up, uh, from, you know, a production designer to executive creative director. Mm. Um, I worked on huge, huge campaigns, um, you know, at, at the best advertising agencies, you know, kind of it, certainly in the city and, and, and maybe the world. Um, oh, the one, 
Yeah, the ones you told me about, they are heavy hitting, yeah. very tapped into the, you know, what is needed in the marketing world uh, companies. Yeah. They're, they're big players. Yeah, it's, it's funny, like, and, and I, I never knew, there, there were two ads that really hit me. Um, and I, one was the, the VW um, Pink Moon ad. I don't know if you know it, um, but they're basically, there's, you know, a bunch of young kids and they're traveling on the PCH um, and they're going to a party and Nick Drake's Pink Moon is on. And at the time I was, I was reading um, Zen and the Art of the Motorcycle Maintenance by yep. Persig. And it was all about, you know, the journey versus the destination. So these kids show up in the cabriolet and they get to their party um, and they look around and they're like, nah, and they put on the, you know, put the car in reverse and, and, you know, go back out and, you know, continue their, their journey on the PCH because that was better than the party. And, you know, that came out, I think in the late nineties and it was, you know, it, it came in between, you know, kind of like bull crap commercials that were just selling and, and, you know, that. In this case, that there was a narrative, and it was, you know, it was a conceptual thing that had some universal truth. And I was like, "Wow, that's powerful!" And it, it was very emotional to me, especially because I was sort of reading that book, and it just kind of hit me at the right time. And what's crazy is I wound up working with all of the the people that worked on that ad that got me into this industry, um, and it was and it was awesome. Um, you know, the, the creative director, the editor, the producer, um, you know, we're, we're all out at dinner at, you know, for some production out in LA. And I was telling them, I was like, Hey, this is, you guys got me into advertising. Um, you know, and, and it was a, it was a pretty compelling moment. Uh, pretty profound. Are you uh, sure it wasn't, um, the use of Nick Drake's Pink Moon? Yeah. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah, I know. It's great. But well, it is funny, like uh, all I do, I mean, I'm a musician and whatever, but I, I, I listen to the impact of how, um, you know, audio and visual are blended to create impact. Yeah. And, I, and it's uh, it's just an interesting thing. But, you know, as somebody who's made a career out of marketing and now um, coming to, uh, well, actually, how long have you been in uh, Quincy now uh, at this at the college? Uh, just a few weeks. So I... I've just figured out where the printers are. I just figured out how to print in 11 by 17. So I'm, I'm very new, um, but I'm, I'm loving it so far. It's, it's a totally different scene. And what I'm excited about is, is kind of bringing the same rigor and approach that, you know, I I've been sort of accustomed to and lucky to have, you know, working for like Chrysler, Fidelity, Progressive, you know, like huge brands. I, I want to sort of apply that same approach to Quincy College. Um, and I think that's where the opportunity is. I really want to sort of, you know, build a brand um, versus just putting out ads, uh, one-off ads that really don't ladder up to a, a bigger idea. Um, so that's sort of like where I am in, in the process of, of sort of doing the research and, you know, understanding who, do, who the audience is, what are our strengths, what are, you know, how do we differentiate from, you know, other colleges and you know what's what's our pathway um so i i you know so um i mean people who are listening uh they don't know that we've talked before but we have talked a bit yeah. and i i'm really impressed with just uh you know your overall your 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 vision or your relation to the things that um you believe in are going to be melded into your into that vision. So whether or not it's scoped or it's uh, crafted just yet, mm -hmm. I like I like your openness and your awareness. Um, and uh, you spoke about a trip to um, Williamsburg yeah. that you struck, and and the melding of um, old versus new and art and history. And um, I like having someone with that mindset around to show that mm -hmm. not show but just to um collaborate and be a community and build something that you know becomes a not just a destination but a vacation but a, a 
a world that means something to people. Yeah. I, I think one of the, I, I've been really lucky. I, I've, I've been, I've been able to travel the country and sort of the world um, on, you know, big, big brands budgets. So I've, I've been in big cities, small cities, and just sort of all around. And I, through my travels, you know, I, I've seen sort of cool towns and it's just like, boy, this is really cool, but there's, it, it, <laughs> it doesn't even compare to what we have in Quincy. And I, I look and say, how, how do we apply that same approach to Quincy? Because we have so many um, just sort of uh, natural uh, assets. You know, uh, we have the, the history, um, you know, the, the quarries, the shipbuilding, you know, we have oceanfront, we have, you know, access to transportation. It's just such a compelling, um, you know, center. Uh, and, you know, I, I do think that the city has really, really improved over the past 10 or 15 years. And I mean, the, the growth is obvious and, you know, there's a, amazing infrastructure changes that have happened that are putting us at, at sort of like a world-class level. You know, the Adams Green, it, it's beautiful. Um, you know, the fountain, it's, it's I, I really, I, I see the investment in that infrastructure and I, I think that's going to pay dividends. I, I think for me, what I would love to see is sort of, um, I don't know, we talked about how the old, like when I went to Williamsburg, it, what was interesting was that there was that sort of ye old chuckleberry, you know, expected history angle and those shops where people were selling the, you know, the historical hats and, you know, the, the, the rifles, et cetera. But there was also like, like kind of a cool art scene to it that was unexpected. And, and I love that those two things could coexist. Um, there was a, a good energy um, you know, to, to that little section of, of town. Uh, and it, it was interesting to me that, again, th those two things can coexist and the juxtaposition of the two uh, from an old world's perspective to sort of what's happening now um, was really interesting. And, and it, it showed that there's a framework for that to, you know, happen here. Because, uh, you know, we do have that history. We do have the tourists uh, they come here and it's like, well, what else can we do while they're here? What else can they, you know, can they browse, you know, a, a cool furniture shop uh, where we celebrate, you know, some artist, uh, you know, who's, you know, moving from Boston to here because it's, it's, it's a better environment for him or, you know, Brooklyn to here. It, it's, 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 I think we should be sort of not only a regional sort of hub, but uh, you know, a national hub. That this is a this is a really cool place to live and work. I, you know, for me, listening to um, just listening to you and and having your take on stuff, I love the fact that um, you're bringing. You know, I'm, I mean, I love the marketing world, and mm -hmm. I love bringing out a brand and bringing out a story and like understanding why there has to be a story. Quincy already has a story. You have a college that, um, you know, it, there could be some more light sh shown on, shined on it, uh, shown on. And, um, but it's like in 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 my mind, I see, I I, I really relate to what you're saying, yep. and it means a lot to me because traveling like I have too, mm -hmm. I see a lot of things that are lacking here. And it's like a world that has, it's rich with, you know, so much, but yet lacking like this love. Yep. Which means just like love, like a passion. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, a person with like you is very instrumental in changing things. And I believe that um, Quincy is a good place to, you know, the whole South Shore, but yep. it's a good place for, you know, a renaissance. Yeah. And and I, I believe it has the bones yeah. and the community to do something to, you know, make it more attractive and enjoyable. And I'm, I'm loving the fact that you're around and you're, you're excited. Yeah. Thanks, man. I, I think bones is a great way to put it. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's, I look at assertive audiences. Um, I, I think it's an opportunity for you know people like me who have you know basically lived their whole lives here, grew up here, to sort of take another look and you know 
it's it's the critical mass. The more people we can get into this community and re-energize it and support each other, I mean that that's one of the you know the the city is very prideful um, in, in good ways. Advertising people like they're just they're on the forefront of what's cool. And I I, I kept telling people like you got to check out Quincy. It's, it's actually a really cool city, and I think you would dig it. And there's a perception of sort of the the older Quincy that they don't they don't know that it's like super diversified and um, there's a, a ton of cool restaurants. And it's funny because I'll get texts, uh, you know, from my friends who, you know, live in Jamaica Plain or, you know, like, you know, the Inkblot or something. And they're like, hey, I, I just walked around and like, that's like, you were, you're, you know, it's legit. Like, I just checked out the Townsend. It was awesome. You know, I was at 16C. Awesome. And I'm like, yeah, there's so much, <laughs> so much that you, you don't know about. Well, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It does take the people that are the cutting edge edge people to give it the the nod. You're right. And that's just life, you know. But yeah. but the reality is, is there is people like 16C, the Townshend. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Alba's been a staple, and it's a great restaurant. But the, Alba needed those other restaurants exactly. around it. Yep. Um, yep. You know, to to bring more life. And I, I agree, like you need people to, you know, experience what is here. And yep. you know, these restaurateurs, they're taking risks and yep. they're but you know, when you deliver, you deliver and people notice and they return. And yep. that's part of like, you know what what will build this this wave that could resurrect something that um should have maintained the whole time i mean mm-hmm. there's some really interesting things going on in quincy is there something going on right now that you could share that um you know you're trying to implement right now to kind of you know bring to light some of the cool stuff that may be overlooked at quincy college that you know you want to share for prospective students or sure. prospective people in the area period yeah it, it's funny i i i thought i knew what was happening on campus and i i every every single day i i would meet someone new and i'd be like oh i didn't know that was happening that's amazing um like we we have been meeting you know the students are back on which is great uh when i first started it was you know it, it, it was just before classes began so you know the there was empty hallways and it was great to see the, the students back. It was just the, the energy and, um, you know, you, you have a sort of a perception of who that, you know, the audience is, but when you actually see them in person, talk to them in the elevator, you know, figure out what's, what's going on in their world, um, you really get a better sense of, you know, who they are, what they need, <clears throat> what their goals are. Um, so it's, it's sort of, it, it takes it away from sort of like the abstract and into, into, you know, something real and tangible. Um, and it's been exciting to just meet those people, uh, meet the faculty, uh, hear the passion, um, you know, of, of, there's a lot of people here that really, really care. Um, they're, they're not in it for anything, but sort of the, you know, the benefit of society. Uh, that's why they got into teaching. They got into, you know, some of these people could work anywhere, but they chose to work here because they feel like they're going to make an impact in the world. And, um, you know, I, I, I've met with almost almost everyone uh, across different departments. And, you know, I, I'm just sort of in the discovery phase of like, okay, what what is Quincy all about? What, you know, what what makes it great? What, what are things that we can work on? How do we sort of tailor the message to make sure that it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's going to resonate with our audience and that we can put a spotlight on all the wonderful things that are happening. Um, we just uh, did an interview with um, an alum from Plymouth and she, I mean, it was just so inspiring talking to her. She, she had like, <laughs> she had three kids and a husband who was going through some medical issues and she walked into the Plymouth campus and said, you know, I, I want to be a nurse. Um, I know that the program starts in September. Tell me what classes I need to take in order to get that. And the advisor said, you need six prerequisites. Um, it's kind of a lot, you know, like 
you know, given your situation, like what do, do you think you can't can handle it? And she said, absolutely. And guess what? She did it. She worked through the night and, you know, really uh, set her mind to it. And, you know, come September, she was in that program. And now she's super successful. She owns her own company. She's, you know, a, a nurse practitioner. Um, co coincidentally, on the Plymouth campus, um, it's in that uh, Cordage Park. Um, and it was just awesome. It was just, it, you know, you, you could, th through hearing her story, you can then see students in the hallways and, and know that, boy, what, what a great role model for her, um, you know, that what she can provide to other people. Um, and just be a little bit more inspiring. Um, I, I think I think students need to see themselves and other people and know that there's a pathway to success, um, whether that's financial or you know sort of personal and intellectual growth. Um, I, I think it's sort of all wrapped in one. Um, it's it's just it's it's really humbling for me and sort of inspiring and and like I mean that so genuinely. Like I, I come home and I, I tell my wife about someone that I met and it's just like, boy, this person, you know, came from, you know, uh, uh, some sort of immigration, um, you know, almost like a refugee situation. And they're so optimistic and so passionate about, you know, you know, improving their lives and getting a foothold for their family. And it's just like, how, how can you not love and respect that and try to support those people who are trying to, you know, uh, ratchet up in the world and, and make a better life for for themselves and their family. It's it's just it's absolutely staggeringly beautiful, and it's real. And it's it's like my problem is how do I how do I how do I tell these stories? Um, you know, um, how do I choose between these stories? Because I, I can only do so much uh, right away. Uh, so it, it's going to be difficult trying to you know spotlight all all of these folks. Yeah, it's a, I, I would say, though, that just me listening to you in this yeah. conversation and our other conversations, mm -hmm. um, your input on the community is uh, hopeful and inspiring to me. Okay. And it helps, you know, I mean, <clears throat> you're welcome. But it, uh, your, your, your thoughts uh are ones that I, you know, I really feel like I personally, I mean, uh, I, I align with them. I, I, I really love your, uh, your take and I appreciate mm -hmm. the conversations because I feel like you're a good human and you're looking for good things for, you know, and for many different pur purposes. I mean, you want, obviously you want your own self growth, sure. um, which is, uh, a natural thing and, uh, you know, deserving but you also are looking at it in a more worldly lens. And I like that. And I like the, the areas that you are picking to, to maybe um, have Quincy resemble in some ways, because we need to pick and learn. And it's not, uh, you know, maybe we, maybe we don't use snobby, but we'll use, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's just uh, experience, well, taste I, I, experience, you know? I think it's so I wound up uh, I, I got a typeface from this um, type foundry in in Basel, Switzerland and I told um, I, I had a nice rapport with with the owner and I was like, hey look I, you know I, I can't afford this typeface. it's beautiful. Um, you know here here's my mission. I, I want to surround these students and <laughs> this campus and this community with a beautiful typeface that, you know, it, it isn't really seen, um, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, like Nike uses it. it. It's beautiful. The lowercase G is just chef kiss. Um, and what was cool is the, the it was these two guys, Fabian and uh, Johannes, and they're like, Hey man, we, we like your mission. Like we, we support what you're doing. So we're going to give you this typeface uh, that's super expensive for nothing, you know, like just, just take it, you know, but show us, you know, show us what you use with it. And uh, we're excited to, you know, to be a part of, you know, this whole mission that you're on. And, and I think it's, it's, it's a symbolic gesture that these students, this community, they're worthy of, you know, beautiful design and, you know, typography and, you know, 
um, considered choices that are, you know, raising the aesthetics. And I, I think, you know, it, it's hard to sort of, you know, translate to, to something that is like, yeah, that, that has a return on investment, but that's the power of a brand. The power of the brand is sort of lifting everything um, and saying, yes, you matter. This matters. You know, this program matters. This school matters. Um, and, and you treat it with respect and, you know, you have impeccable craftsmanship. And suddenly, you know, subconsciously or not, I, I think people have a different perception. Um, and, I, you know, that's, that's my mission. That's my goal in service of the students. Uh, I, I want them to, I want this school to, I want to run through a wall for this school. Um, I want to make this place what it can be. Um, I, I think we are sort of uniquely positioned to just maximize, you know, the, I've, I've been so lucky. I, I, I really have. I've been so lucky in my life. And this is sort of my way of, I don't know, it, giving back in a way. Like I, I, I wasn't fulfilled with making, you know, Chrysler, you know, selling more pickup trucks. Uh, it was fun. It was awesome. I got to meet a lot of awesome people and I just could not um, have had a better experience, but there was a, I, I reached my point where I needed something more. I needed something more fulfilling. And I feel like this is the, the perfect fit for me to apply what I've learned, you know, with other brands to something mean, meaningful and, you know, something that I, I personally believe in. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of my, my friends, like the metaphor of, you know, some of my friends who weren't as lucky as I was um, to have sort of the support system and, you know, um, you know the opportunities that I had. Um, and, you know, th those kids were smarter, more talented um, than I was. But because of, you know, circumstances, you know, I, I was able to you know, achieve bigger things. And, you know, I, I want to save those kids. I want, I want to give those people an opportunity to, you know, advance. And, um, you know, the, the opportunity is just out there and, and it's real. And I, I believe in it wholeheartedly. And I'm, I'm going to give everything to this place to, to make sure that we get on that level and we can, you know, help as many people as we can. Thank you for joining us for another Shine the Light. This is Matt McGowan of Quincy College. Um, talk soon, brother. That All was, right, sounds good. That was awesome. I'm really looking forward to uh, more stuff with you, man. All right, thanks. Me too. I appreciate it. Peace, buddy. See ya.